Welcome back. This is part two in my mini-series on pucker prevention for the Virtual Sewing Expo 2017. In the previous video, we discussed the importance of hooping properly, and here's one of my hooped pieces, and we hooped this shirt as well. But uh, let's do a quick review. Both of these samples were stitched on the same fabric with the same stabilizer. Uh, we have Cutaway. It's a heavyweight jersey knit, one of those kind of beefy tees. They were both stitched with polyester thread. And you'll notice that this one is nice and smooth. This one is really wrinkled. And it's because if you think back to what I said in that first video, if you stretch your fabric in the hoop, you are guaranteed to have puckers. Now I want you to keep this idea of stretching and fabric distortion in mind as we go through other things that contribute to puckering. So here we have the same row stitched again, and it's, this time it's stitched on a lightweight cotton. Both of them were stitched on the same day, on the same machine, with the same stabilizers, same tension, same hooping, same everything except for one thing. And I want you to notice that this one looks pretty good, this one looks pretty awful. And can you see right in here, see that white space? That's a gap between the outline and the body of the rows. Same thing up here. This one is perfect. Now I digitized this rose and when I stitched this one out, this is the first one I stitched out, I thought, what the heck? How can my design look that bad? When I was first getting started in embroidery back in the mid, early mid 1990s, rayon thread was the most popular brand. And at that time polyester thread was pretty wild and woolly critter. It didn't sew well on our machines, it was kind of plasticky, it was kind of wiry. And around 2000, the game started to change. Polyester became a little more tamed, and it became the dominant brand. But I didn't switch because we were heavily invested in the, in the rayon, and I really liked the rayon. And there's really no reason to switch. And besides, the brands we used didn't have comparable polyester colors. But when I restarted all over again in 2008 with Lindy G Embroidery, polyester was the dominant thread and so I just went with it and I found that it has some tricky characteristics now why did polyester come in so much well it's stronger it's a it's a petroleum product and it's virtually impervious to the elements it's stronger it stands up to harsh laundering it stands up to even bleach and it won't fade in the sun so it seems like it's ideal but the problem is that strength is its weakness. Rayon is what we call a tension friendly thread because when it starts getting pulled it just snaps. Now that sounds like a bad thing but what happens with polyester is it gets pulled and it stretches and as our machines sew faster and faster and faster that thread is sawing back and forth in the eye of the needle and that's generating friction. It actually goes back and forth 20 or more times before it ever becomes a stitch in your fabric. And the hotter it gets, the more it can stretch. And the, the higher your machine sews, the higher the tension. So tension is going to make it stretch. You saw those other two roses, they look perfect. And they were sewn with polyester thread. So what I had to do was adjust the tensions on my machine and slow it down a bit. So yeah, our machines sew really, really fast. Some of them sew a thousand or more stitches per minute, but I hardly ever, ever sew that fast. I'm usually sewing around 600 to 700 stitches per minute, slower on a more special specialty thread like metallics or something like that. You've got to watch your tension. Stretching uh, thread, puckers. Stretching fabric, puckers. Now, what you'll find with the polyester is that when you have it still hooped, it looks great. But as it comes out of the hoop and relaxes over the next 24 hours, you'll see more puckers come in. Once they're in there, they're permanent. You cannot undo puckers after something is puckered. So here's another extreme example of puckering. And in this case, the thread shrunk after I washed it. I had prepared all my fabric. We'll talk about fabric prep here in a little bit, but this was pre-washed cotton. I used a water soluble backing because these are really lightweight designs and I didn't need any stabilizer and this was going to become a quilt and I stitched all of these box blocks with cotton embroidery thread. 
I stitched all 12 blocks and then I threw them in the washer and dryer and when they came out they were puckered and what happened here is the thread shrunk I've never had this happen before but I'm so happy that I washed all these blocks before I pieced it into my quilt and had it quilted. That would have been a big, big disappointment to have it look like this after I had put my quilt together. So that's another gotcha. Test your threads to make sure they, they do what they're supposed to. So here's a design on the back of a denim jacket. These designs are free with my Craftsy class on 20 things every machine embroiderer should know. They're otherwise not available on my website. What I've got going on here is some rippling, and I've got some push. And the thing is that when we embroider on fabric, we are actually adding thread to our fabric. Fabric's already made up of thread, right? It's woven. So that design has to go somehow in between the fibers on our fabric. And then we run into something we call thread displacement or fabric displacement, depending on how you want to look at it. And I think of this as the full bathtub effect. So this is an easy way to remember it. Imagine this glass is a bathtub. And I filled it all the way up to the brim with water. And I'm going to get in. If I'm a skinny person, I'm going to displace a little bit of water. But if I'm a bigger person, I'm going to flood the whole basement. So the same thing happens with fabric. When we have a little design with low stitch counts and thinner thread, it's not going to warp our fabric. When we have a thicker design with shading layers and details and all of that stuff, it's going to displace more fabric than a thinner design. Also, the thicker your thread, the more it's going to displace. Now, The thing with designs and stitches is that on fabric, we're thinking about embroidery on, but we're really embroidering through. We're going to start with one stitch, but now every stitch has, after that, has one thread coming in and another thread coming out. So there are two threads going in and out for every little stitch on there except the first and the last. And that's, that thread has to have space. Now, this thread brand, uh, this is Finishing Touch, and its claim to fame was it covers better. Well, the reason it covered better was it was 35 weight whereas standard embroidery thread is 40 weight. And this is what we digitize for, 40 weight thread for the most part. Now, 35 weight is imperceptibly thicker than 40. But once you start stitching a design like this, you will really create pucker power because this thread will build up. It's just like, you know, having one more little cookie at Christmas time but you do that all day long, it adds up. So the same thing happens with stitches. These kinds of stitches, these open or red work style designs, are perfect for heavier, denser fabrics like this. But, I mean, who wants to sew red work designs on everything? They're, they're not nearly as pretty or as interesting as these designs. So let me show you a way that you can deal with that. So, this is a pocket on a tote bag. This is canvas duck. Canvas duck is also another heavy duty fabric and not only is it tightly woven and heavy, it's a coarsely woven so you're not going to have really smooth stitches on the edge, which is another problem altogether. What I did here was all the black lines that you see, that's my stitching. This is just a pretty much a giant red work design and all the color comes from colored pencils. Coloring in coloring books is all the rage these days. I'm not a big fan of coloring and coloring books, but I do like coloring embroidery. These are uh, ink tense pencils, and there is a blog post on, on how to use them on my website. Now, what if you want to go with a really heavy design on your fabric? What do you do then? Is there anything you can do? Well, stabilizer won't help. It's just going to push the fabric no matter what you do. So what you can think about doing is using software and one particular brand is Embrilliance Density Repair Kit and that will allow you to go in and select a fabric and it will redensify your design. So is it perfect? Well, that depends. Because what I think is the ideal density may not be what you think is the ideal density. So, you know, you can play around with it and change your settings and see what you get. 
So how do you know if a design is going to work on your fabric? Well, really good question. You don't. You can't tell by looking at a picture if the embroidery design is going to work on your fabric. If you download designs from the internet, you'll find that a lot of them aren't even scans of real embroidery. They're just 3D rendered images from somebody's embroidery software. And I really suspect that some of them have never ever been sewn because when I look at them, they're pretty bad. So even if you do find one on a better site that has a scan of the embroidery, you still don't know how it's going to work on your fabric, on your machine, with your technique. So what can you do beforehand? Well, for one thing, you should always test your designs. But if you watch your designs sew, over time you'll begin to see certain things that repeat that occur in every design, some in better designs, some that don't occur in worse designs, and some the designs that work better on this fabric but not on that fabric. And you'll begin to kind of get an idea. But to help you along, I read a book called The Anatomy of a Design, How to Think Like a Digitizer. And you don't have to be a digitizer to be a good embroiderer. But knowing how an embro a digitizer thinks will really help you. And so what I do in this book is I take you under the hood to look at how designs are built, why they're built that way, and how you can learn to look at a design in software before you ever, ever stitch it out. And I really think this is the next step to becoming a better embroiderer, is to look at the designs in software to see how they're going to look. And you don't even have to have expensive software. In Brilliance Essentials is, I think, I don't know, 149 or something like that. And you can do that in that software. And that software works on both Mac and Windows. So that's what I like about it. Check this book out. It is a PDF. It's a digital download. I've printed it out here. You do not have to print it out. You can if you want. But I like a PDF book because it's so easy to search for something in there. And you can load it on your iPad or whatever digital device that you have. So let's talk a little bit about fabric prep. Remember when I said in the first video that I had this hooped properly, but I still might get puckers? Well, it depends on my design, because now we've learned about displacement. We've learned about um, our threads and how we have to manage our tensions. So what else can we do to this to help prepare it? Well, before I hoop it, I don't think I'm going to unhoop this, but I like to use starch. This is a medium lightweight uh, cotton broadcloth, and it's going to stitch pretty well. But if I start packing a lot of stitches in here, my tensions are really tight or, or even a little tight, I could get some puckering. But if I use a starch, and I like this really heavy starch brand, you can kind of beef up your fabric. Is this stabilizing? Mm, it's kind of preparing your fabric. I don't think of these kind of things as stabilizing. This is temporary, so if I'm going to need something a little more permanent, I'm going to have to use a permanent kind of stabilizer on the back. Another popular one is Best Press. What I like about this is it smells good, and it doesn't leave any flaky stuff like starch can. Now, sometimes I need more oomph than this kind of starch or best press, uh, best press can do. And what I'll do is I'll take liquid starch and I'll just paint it on my fabric. So I just paint it on my fabric. And then I'll just lay it out on my cutting table and I'll just kind of squeegee it out in a straight and even form. And I let it dry. And when I hold it up, it's like a piece of cardboard. And that is really, really sturdy. In fact, sometimes I'll do that when I just want to use a wash away, but I know that a wash away is not going to be enough support for embroidery. Now, sometimes you need a little bit more than what starch does, and you can use a fusible interfacing. Once again, fusible interfacing is not a stabilizer. It's fabric prep. Now, that's a permanent thing. And whereas these other things are temporary, you will have to wash these out afterwards. So it's not a very production friendly kind of thing if you're doing um, commercial embroidery. But I don't do production embroidery anymore. I mostly do embroidery for myself or samples or something like that. And I'll go all out to make it perfect for hooping. So interfacing is a good choice, but it can change the hand of your fabric. So you're not going to use it on every project. So, you know. Use some, some thought there. Another thing I do is I pre-wash my fabrics. 
I pre-wash them so that I can pre-shrink them. You can see that on that little design with the cotton thread, it doesn't always solve the problem. Now remember the shirt that I showed you in the first video? It has numerous problems. It was a purchased garment at a retail store, not some little boutique. So it's, you know, it's a production garment. It's a t-shirt, kind of a medium lightweight t-shirt. The design is really, really heavy. It's way too thick for this kind of fabric, no matter what you stabilize it with. And I don't know why they did this, but they use a tearaway on the back instead of a cutaway. Once I washed it, it shrunk and it got really, really puckery. It's really ripply in here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, there's like a little roller coaster thing going on in here. It's a pretty design. It's just not suitable for the way it was done and it's just way, way, way too dense. If they'd used cutaway, would it have helped? Probably not because stabilizer will not prevent shrinkage. It's just one of those embroidery facts of life. Okay, what else can you do to improve your embroidery? Well, use the right needle. You want to use the smallest, sharpest needle that can penetrate the fabric, carry the thread through the fabric without damage to the thread, the fabric, or the needle. So if you get too thin and your fabric is too stiff, you can flex your needle. That'll cause damage. But using the right needle really will make your stitches a lot more precise and your embroidery better. Now another thing I heard in a class a long time ago that stuck with me forever was sewing with a dull needle is like shaving with a dull razor. And if that doesn't send shutters down your spine, I don't know what will. So just keep that in mind. Change your needles when you need to. How often is that? I can't tell you. It depends on what you're embroidering on and how many stitches you're sewing. And that's a lot to know about preventing puckers. It's not as simple as just putting your fabric in the hoop or you know, choosing the right thread. It's a combination of things that can cause puckering. And puckering gets us all at some point. It might seem like it's just overly hard, but it's not. Once you manage the tensions on your machine, you pick your thread, you use that same thread, you should be able to just keep it that way for a long, long time and keep it a much easier. Now, be sure to check my website because I have lots of blog posts. There is blog post on puckering. It doesn't go into this kind of detail, but there is one if you prefer to have something that you can read or uh, print out, put in your notebook. I have specials for you Expo people, so visit the resources pages and do sign up for my newsletter because you'll get a free design collection. Thanks for watching and thanks to Margaret for putting this together. It's so much easier to come to you on camera from my dining room than it is to drag all this stuff around the country and see you wherever you live.